why everybody met the bad here. I hope you're doing well. So, this week, we got a new Mission Impossible movie. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. I've been a fan of this franchise since the third one in 2006. That was only Philip Seymour Hoffman as the villain. And I think, I think this would be a perfect opportunity to rank these movies. So, do you choose to accept this mission? Starting out with my least favorite Mission Impossible movie, that would be Mission Impossible 2. That came out in 2000, about four years after the original came out. This was directed by John Woo. Woo. Um, it has Sandy Newton as the female lead slash love interest. Uh, Dunnery Scott plays the villain. Actually, the funny part is Dunnery Scott was supposed to be playing Wolverine at the time in the first X-Men movie, but since he was already contracted for Mission Impossible 2, he had to leave X-Men and go do Mission Impossible 2. Well, that opened up the door for Hugh Jackman to come in and play Wolverine. Now, picture that for a moment. We're gonna have Dunry Scott as Wolverine instead of Hugh Jackman. Ooh. Talking about a complete change in history right there. If they knew for Hugh Jackman, there would be no Hugh Jackman, right, as of today. If it wasn't for Gregory Scott going over to Mission Impossible 2 and shooting that instead of X-Men. But anyway, um, I, this movie's not good. I mean, not a, not a bad movie, but as a, as a movie, it's fine. The problem with this movie is when you're watching this movie, when you're watching this movie, this is a spy action film, right? That's what this franchise is. Well, when you're over an hour and 15 minutes into your movie, and there's been no action scenes whatsoever, ladies and gentlemen, that's a problem. That's a major problem. And this isn't like the first movie where it's an origin, or setting up the world, setting up the characters, no, no, this is movie number two. And it takes almost over an hour and 15 minutes till we have our first action scene. The funny part is once the action gets going, the last 40 minutes or so in this movie is really good. I mean, I love, I love, and I love, and I love the scene. And once we start, when they're in that bunker, and uh, Ethan Hunt goes there and he needs to get the vial, the antidote to give to Sandy Newton because she already injected herself in, with the, uh, the virus, Calmera. Um, and he's down in that bunker and where he's fighting his henchman, uh, David Attenborough, who went on to be in uh, Van Helsing playing Dracula. Um, that whole scene where they're fighting, and then when they bring him in, and they think they got Ethan Hunt, and he takes off the mask, and that music that starts ramping up by Hans Zimmer, oh my god, I love it. And the dove flying away, that whole scene is brilliant action, and it keeps you on the edge of that moment, and that really Ethan Hunt. Um, and then the whole motorcycle chase is great. The hand-to-hand -hand combat on the beach works. So that's what I'm saying, Mike. The last 40 minutes in this movie is awesome. But the first hour and 20 minutes are not. <laughs> Fanny Newton feels like she's bored most of the movie. 
Um, they promised Anthony Hopkins in this movie, in the trailer. He only has two scenes. Um, yeah. Not, not a great Mission Impossible movie. Mission Impossible 1 is my second to least favorite. Um, I think the first 20 minutes are good. It's almost like its own little movie in its way. I love the cinematography by uh, Brian De Palma as the director. His canted angles really add something. And it almost gives an old movie feel with the shadowing and lighting. So I like the cinematography in this movie. The first 20 minutes really worked good. I don't think this was Tom Cruise's, I mean, not breakout role, but as an action star. This was his breakout action role. And, and he was also the producer of the movie. Not mad. And I like the more thriller mystery vibe that this movie gives. It is the shortest uh, Mission Impossible movie at only an hour and 45 minutes. And like then we get the introduction of Ving Rhames, Luther, who ends up being in every Mission Impossible movie so far. So, it's good, it's just not the best in my opinion. Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. This was the fourth film in the franchise. Brad Bird came on to direct. Brad Bird was mostly known as a Pixar director for like Ratatouille, The Incredibles. And this was his first live action film. The whole sequence in Dubai, the Dubai sequence where Ethan is hanging off of the building is that whole entire scene in Dubai, as soon as they enter until they leave, is excellent. The fight scenes, you know, and then Ethan hanging on outside the, the building, the car chase through the sandstorm, it's all great. And I wish we had more of that. The addition of Jeremy Renner. Jeremy Renner enters the Mission Impossible franchise in this movie. In fact, a lot of people don't know, that Jeremy Renner was about to take over the franchise after Ghost Protocol. But because Ghost Protocol made so much money, uh, the studio was like, you know what? No, we're gonna bring back Tom Cruise. Yeah. Sorry, sorry Jeremy. Not today. I am Paula Patton, who at that time was also getting more noticed. More with some, a lot of Denzel Washington movies, like Deja Vu, and, uh, Two Guns. But, um, I wish they kept her, I wish they brought her back in the franchise. But they never did after number four. I don't know why. Uh, the Kremlin sequence was also a really fun sequence. When Ethan and Simon Pegg, that was a good, and even the opening in the prison. Um, with, uh, Ethan Hunt. And I also like how, I don't know what it is with Tom Cruise, like, if you want to do Mission Impossible movies, in one movie, he has short hair. Second movie, long hair. Third movie, short hair. Fourth movie, long hair. Fifth movie, short hair. But I will say in the fourth one, the long hair with the, uh, black, like, leather jacket he wears, he looks like a badass. He really does. Um, but yeah, for, for some reason this movie never grabbed me like a lot of other people. My next favorite Mission Impossible movie is Mission Impossible 3. Now this is the movie that got me into the Mission Impossible franchise. I thought I was not a big fan of those first two movies. And then it took almost six years to make another one, Mission Impossible 3. But this is the movie that made me a fan. Number one, I like the story. It grounded Ethan Hunt more than the other first two movies. It kind of made him settle down a little bit. He certainly had you know, a girlfriend who ended up being his wife, played by Michelle Monaghan. I thought they had great chemistry. They have a great villain in this movie, played by Philip Seymour Hoffman. Just that opening alone, you are scared of this villain. 
he has a presence every time he's on screen. And so is Lee Marvin, he doesn't have to say that much. There's also no really no action scenes except near the end where he's punching the shit out of Tom Cruise. Um, it's all in his mannerism, it's all in the way he projects the dialogue. To me, he's still the best villain, one of the best villains. And up until um, Mission Impossible Rogue Nation and Fallout, I, I've always thought he was the best villain. Even though he's not on screen that much, but he's just, every time he's on screen, it works. I love the, I think this is one of the best action movies in the franchise. You have so many great action set pieces, whether it's in the opening, whether it's when they go and get Terry Russell across the country, that whole shootout sequence in the rundown building, or the helicopter chase when they're trying to escape. That's an awesome one. You got the one in the Vatican when they're trying to get so see more often. Those are some awesome sequences. The, the, the bridge, one of the major highlights, the scene on the bridge when people are trying to get Phil and Seymour Hoffman, break him out of the truck. Um, the scene in China where Tom Cruise is going from one skyscraper to another. Great sequence. And then the ending in uh, when uh, Ethan Hunt is going to get Michelle Mo Julie. Michelle Monaghan. And this movie also has a lot of humor. Um, I still love the part when Ethan is trying to break away from the IMF and he finally gets away and gets to a radio that's playing We Are Family, All My Sisters, Brothers, and Me. And it's hilarious. IMF is like this family. And it was just a funny moment. The of Simon Pegg was also a stroke of genius. I mean, he's now been in all the Mission Impossible movies, and he's awesome. This, this was J.J. Abrams' first movie, feature film. Yeah, he worked on Alias, which is also a spy series, but this was his first movie, and I thought he knocked it out of the park. This is one of my favorite J.J. Abrams movies, outside of the first Star Trek film. And this movie had a great ensemble. Um, not to mention I think he had uh, Michelle Monaghan, Philip Seymour Hoffman, but he also had Maggie Q, Jonathan Rice Myers, which I don't get why they never brought them back. They were great. I think you had Kerry Russell in here for a little bit. You had Morris Fishburn as the new head of IMF. You had Millie Crudup in here. It was a great ensemble. Mission Impossible Rogue Nation that came out in 2015. This, this is an awesome movie. Harris as the villain was great. I love that opening where they end up putting Ethan in that glass case. I thought he was a formidable villain, which, funny enough, he was more calculated than action. This is like an almost like Zone Seymour Hoffman. It's not about the action, you know, the villain fighting, intellect, um, playing games, if you will. Um, the addition of Rebecca Ferguson as Elsa Faust was excellent, kind of like a double agent. I thought he has made one of the best additions to this franchise. I'm glad they carried her over into Fallout and all the Gen Reckoning. Um, I thought he was one of the best new characters in this franchise, along with Simon Pegg. Um, the opera sequence. To me, it's one of the best sequences in this movie. And the way it's constructed, perfect. The cinematography, you know where everyone is in correlation with one another. It, the, the shootouts, the hand-to-hand -hand fighting, great. The underwater sequence with Ethan Hunt, a, a nail-biting sequence that he actually did have to hold his breath for over three minutes or so. The motorcycle chase. After the underwater sequence. Also excellent. 
um, nail binding, fun. The addition of Alec Baldwin being added to the franchise was really good. I like Alec Baldwin. Um, and one thing I'm bringing back Jeremy Renner. He brought a lot of humor to the movie. And this was Christopher McQuarrie's first uh, Mission Impossible movie. He wrote it and directed it. And he was already working with Tom Cruise in All the Way Back to like Valkyrie. He wrote that. Jack Reacher. Edge of Tomorrow. He helped write some of that. So he's been the new Tom Cruise uh, buddy buddy, if you will. Like a Leo and Scorsese. Or a De Niro and Scorsese. And like I said, this was my favorite movie up until we got Fallout. Now let's get into Fallout. Mission Impossible Fallout is my favorite Mission Impossible movie. The action in this movie is unfucking believable From car chases, helicopter chases, hand-to-hand -hand fights in the bathroom, uh, shootouts. It is un- the practical- and that's the other thing with the Mission Impossible movies. Practical. Stunts. Tom Cruise putting himself through hell to get it right, to get the practical real. No CGI, no green screen, all on location, all practical stunts. It is amazing when you see it. Um, cinematography is the me this is also the best looking Mission Impossible movie by far. Also mixing regular format with IMAX footage. And then you're doing the action sequences. Amazing. The hang gliding sequence. Great. And then the helicopter sequence in the third act. Unbelievable. Um, the car chase. Great. When they go to that nightclub with Vanessa Kirby. And they have a fight and a shootout in the bathroom. Awesome. Uh, what else? This is the first movie where they brought back the same villain from Rogue Nation, Sean Harris. Once again, he does a great job. Um, and I thought that was a smart move. That's why I don't get sometimes with movies where they never bring back the villain. And they, they don't kill him. Like, so what happened to that villain that uh, is still alive? Um, yeah. I'm glad they brought back the villain from Rogue Nation. And uh, I also like to see Michelle Monaghan return. She had a small part at the end of Room, I mean, at the end of Ghost Protocol, more like a cameo. But here she's in the entire third act, and I thought that was great. And finally, closes off that storyline. Going back to Mission Impossible Three, even Wes Bentley shows up in this movie. Two new additions in this movie: Henry. Fucking Camel. Oh my god. He is excellent in this movie. I love how they make him turn into a, he's actually a bad guy. You'll find out at, that out at the end of the second act. And he is all that bathroom sequence when he just goes boom boom. And he just goes after the guy and just knocks him the fuck out. I'm like, yep, there's Superman. <laughs> He doesn't need powers. That's Superman. Oh my god, he's the fucking Hulk. He can probably hang out in the Hulk. In real life. Um, he was a bad guy. Even the mustache looked perfect on him. I know Warner Brothers didn't like that, but eh. Oh well. And then Vanessa Kirby comes in here. Um, and she's been around. Like she was in Hobbs and Shaw. Even though this came out before Hobbs and Shaw. She was in like that. About Time with Margot Robbie. She's been on The Crown. But even her, 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 uh, character. We don't get much of her, but when we do, she's a badass. The longest Mission Impossible movie for now. <laughs> um, at almost two and a half hours. And guess what? This movie flies by. This movie flies. For me, the longest Mission Impossible movie. At two and a half hours, this movie flies by. I can't believe it. 
because the act, there are so many action sequences, but you still have those character moments that it all fits together. Along with the great cinematography, great action, great editing, great character moments, great new characters with Henry Cavill, bringing back Michelle Monaghan. This is a great Mission Impossible movie. And on that note, if Dead Reckoning Part 1 and 2 can live up to Fallout and end the Mission Impossible series with two, with the last two movies being great, this is one of the best franchises by far. And to think that by the time we get the next, last Mission Impossible movie, it will be almost, what, 30 years? of Tom Cruise playing this character. Almost 30? <laughs> wow. Um, so that is my ranking of the Mission Impossible movies. Are you going to go see Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 uh, this coming Friday? Let me know. Matt.